Now that we've taken a look at lots of trig properties, trig identities, solving equations, proving identities, we're going to summarize everything we've seen in two videos, one that focuses on equations and another one that will focus on proofs. So the question that we're going to hit in kind of a big general review is how do we solve trig equations? And the big thing with solving the trig equations is we have to know our unit circle. Maybe not be able to rattle off all the values, but at least be able to derive all of the values. So if I were to draw my unit circle here, I should be able to quickly identify where all the key angles are on the unit circle. We know 0 is on the far right. 2 pi is all the way around. Halfway around then is 1 pi. And you should also know that vertical is half of pi or pi over 2, which means the bottom one is going to be the 3 pi over 2. Should also be able to identify all the pi over 6s. There's going to be a pi over 6 just above and just below each of the horizontals. We've got 1 pi over 6 just above. Just below is just below 2 pi or 12 pi, which means 1 less would be 11 pi over 6. All the way to the right is pi, which would be 6 pi over 6. So just above would be 5 pi over 6. And just below would be 7 pi over 6. So we should know where the pi over 6s are. We should also know where the pi over 3s are. Those are going to be just off from vertical. So we've got 1 pi over 3 and 2 pi's over 3. Near the bottom, the 3 pi over 3 is to the left. So the next one would be 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Those are the over 3's. We should also know the quarters that are going to cut through here. All the even quarters are already labeled in green. The odd quarters then are 1 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. You should know where all of those key angles are. Once I've got my key angles, now I also need to know the x and y coordinates of all the key angles. Now, the green ones here are probably the easiest. All the way to the right is 1, 0. Vertically, that's going to be 0, 1. To the left is negative 1, 0. And down at the bottom is going to be uh, 0, negative 1. The brown ones, the over 4s, are probably the next easiest because it's right in the middle. x and y are going to be the same. We know it's root 2 over 2. And we just have to decide if it's positive or negative depending on which quadrant we're in. So pi over 4 in the first quadrant is root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. In the second quadrant, the x is negative. So at 3 pi over 4, we have negative root 2 over 2 comma positive root 2 over 2. In the third quadrant, 5 pi over 4, they're both negative. So negative root 2 over 2 comma negative root 2 over 2. And in the fourth quadrant, this time only the y is negative because it's right and down. So we have positive root 2 over 2 comma negative root 2 over 2. Now on the pi over 6 and the pi over 3, we have to decide if we have a long distance or a short distance. The longer distance will always be root 3 over 2. The shorter distance, root 1, or just 1, over 2. So with pi over 6, we're doing a long x and a short y. So it's root 3 over 2 for x and a short 1 half for y. When we do the pi over 3, though, now the x distance is short, 1 half, and the y distance is longer, root 3 over 2. 2 pi over 3 is in the second quadrant, which means the x is negative. It's still a short x, negative 1 half, and a long y, root 3 over 2. 
When we look at 5 pi over 6, the x coordinate is still negative. But it's a long negative and a short y. So negative root 3 over 2 comma the short 1 half. 7 pi over 6 being in the third quadrant, both are going to be negative. We see the x is long, so it's root 3 over 2. The y is short 1 half. With 4 pi over 3, both negative still, but this time the x is short at 1 half, and the y is long, root 3 over 2. 5 pi over 3. Now we are in the fourth quadrant, so the x is short, but a positive 1 half, and the y is long, negative root 3 over 2. And finally, the 11 pi over 6. The y coordinate is going to be negative again. The x is long, root 3 over 2. The y is short, 1 half. And so we have all the coordinates in all of our key angles. You should be very comfortable with this unit circle by now. And if you are, it's going to make solving equations much easier. So let's see if we can do that. Let's do some examples where we solve. And let's solve all of these on a domain of 0 to 2 pi. So we're not going to do the plus 2 pi k stuff. So let's try a few of these. Let's do 2 sine squared theta minus 5 sine of theta plus 3 equals 0. Well, we know with sine squared, we're just like with x squared, we're probably going to factor and set each factor equal to 0. So let's see how this factors. 2 sine theta times sine theta will give us the 2 sine squared. And if I put the 3 on the right and the 1 on the left, making the 3 negative and the 1 positive, that'll give us negative 5 in the middle. So I can see from that that the sine of theta is equal to negative 1 half or the sine of theta is equal to 3. Or well, if we remember with the unit circle, sine goes from 0 to, well, negative 1 to positive 1. So sine will never equal 3. So we actually only have one possibility. We want to know when the sine of theta equals negative 1 half. Sine's the y-coordinate. We want the y-coordinate to be negative. 1 half is short, so we want the short y-coordinates in the negative direction. And I should be able to recognize that those are at 11 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. So theta is equal to 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And we have our solutions. Let's try another example. Let's do the cosine of 2 theta plus 5 times the cosine of theta plus 3 equals 0. We should recognize cosine of 2 theta. We can break that up using our uh, identity. Cosine of 2 theta has three options. It's cosine squared minus sine squared. Or we have one also that has a sine squared and one that has a cosine squared. What I notice is since the rest of the problem has cosine in it, let's do the one that only has cosine squared, which is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 is equal to cosine of 2 theta. Now I still have plus 5 cosine theta plus 3 equals 0. And I'm going to actually combine the like terms of the 3 and the minus 1. That'll give me 2 cosine squared theta plus 5 cosine of theta plus 2 equals 0. Now that everything is just cosines, now I can try and factor. 2 cosine squared is cosine times 2 cosine. 1 times 2 will give us the 2 at the end, everything positive. So when I put that together, I get the cosine of theta is equal to negative 1 half. 
or the cosine of theta is equal to negative 2. But I do remember cosine can never be more than negative 1 and 1. That's why it's called the unit circle. Only goes between 1 and negative 1. So I just need to decide when cosine is negative 1 half. And so I think about my unit circle. Cosine is the x-coordinate, and I want a short x-coordinate going backwards 1 half. That's going to be the one that goes up and down to the left. Coming off the vertical, those are the over 3's. That's 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So theta must be equal to 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Let's try another problem. Let's try one with cosecant. Let's do cosecant of theta equals cotangent of theta plus 1. Now with cosecant and cotangent, we're probably not as familiar with the unit circle and those values. So let's change these problems using our identities into all sines and cosines. Cosecant is 1 over sine of theta. Cotangent theta is cosine theta over sine theta plus 1. Now we can clear the denominator out here by multiplying everything by sine theta all the way across. And when we do, we get 1 equals cosine theta plus sine theta. Well, cosine plus sine, we have a way to change cosine plus sine into a single sine. Actually, we like to write it as sine theta plus cosine theta. And we like to have numbers in front, so we'll put 1 and 1 in front of both of them. And we know that a squared is equal to the m squared plus the n squared. 1 squared plus 1 squared equals 2. So a is equal to the square root of 2. We also know that the cosine of our c was equal to the coefficient of sine divided by a, which is the square root of 2. And we know that the sine of c was the n divided by a square root of 2. Well, if I rationalize these by multiplying by root 2 over 2, we get very familiar looking angles. The cosine of c is root 2 over 2. And the sine of c is root 2 over 2. So what angle does that give us? Both positive, root 2 over 2. We should recognize that's pi over 4. So the angle c is pi over 4, which means we can now rewrite this as 1 equals a single sine. a, which is the square root of 2 times the sine of my angle plus c, which is pi over 4. And by writing sine plus cosine as a single sine, I've now simplified this down to something I can solve. Dividing by the square root of 2, we get 1 over root 2 equals the sine of theta plus pi over 4. Again, we should recognize we can rationalize that to be root 2 over 2. Sine is root 2 over 2 at two places. We want a y-coordinate of root 2 over 2. We want a positive y-coordinate. So we should see that at pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. So the stuff inside, theta plus pi over 4 is equal to those two angles pi over 4, or 3 pi over 4. And if we subtract the pi over 4 from both sides, both options, we end up with theta is equal to 0, or 2 pi over 4, which reduces to pi over 2. But be very careful coming back. 
cosecant and cotangent are reciprocal functions, they have put a sign in the denominator. We've got a domain restriction here that that sine of theta cannot be equal to 0, because that would put 0 in the denominator. And where does the sine of theta equal 0? At 0 or at pi. So theta cannot be equal to 0 or pi, which means we actually have to throw out the 0. If theta is equal to 0, the whole thing's undefined. And the only angle that works is our pi over 2 angle. So that's how we can solve using our property to make everything into a single sign. We actually did several things in that problem. First, we changed everything to sines and cosines. Then we said sine plus cosine can be rewritten as a single sign. And then we solved the resulting equation. So we've got lots of strategies that we can try and pull together now to try and solve. Let's try another one. How about 4 times 1 plus the sine of theta equals cosine squared of theta? Here, I see we've got a cosine squared hanging out with sines, and that's not really convenient. And so we're going to see if we can break that up and make everything match, make everything into sines. Well, cosine squared you should recognize from sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And so if I subtract the sine squared from both sides, cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So making that substitution, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 4 also while I'm at this. We get 4 plus 4 sine of theta is equal to 1 minus the sine squared of theta. And since we have sine squareds and sines, we're going to set it equal to 0 and factor. Adding sine squared to both sides gives us sine squared of theta plus 4 sine of theta. Subtracting 1 gives us plus 3 equals 0. And now we factor. Sine squared is sine times sine. 3 is 3 times 1. Everything's positive. And so I can see that the sine of theta is equal to negative 3 or negative 1. Of course, sine is never bigger than negative 1 or positive 1. So the negative 1 is the only one that counts. And I just have to think, where is sine? Where is the y-coordinate negative 1? That's at 3 pi over 2. So theta is 3 pi over 2. Let's try one last problem. Let's do the sine of 2 theta plus the sine of 4 theta equals 0. We have a couple choices here. We know we can take sine of 2 theta and write it um, using the double angle formula. But I also notice that sine of 2 theta is added to the sine of 4 theta. We're adding two sines together. So let's rewrite this instead. We're using the sum to product formula. The sum to product formula says that it's going to be equal to 2 times the sine of the sum divided by 2 times the cosine of the difference divided by 2, still equal to 0. And if we simplify that, we get the sine of 6 theta over 2, which is 3 theta, times the cosine of negative 2 theta over 2, which is negative theta, equals 0. And what's nice about the cosine of negative theta, that's the same as the cosine of positive theta. Positive and negative angles have the same cosine, opposite signs. And it's really nice because everything's already factored for us. So we can set each factor equal to 0. The sine of 3 theta equals 0, and the cosine of theta equals 0. Now, because we have the sine of 3 theta in there, 
That 3 means as we're working with the sign, we need to go around the circle three times. So our 3 theta then is equal to sine the y coordinate is 0 at 0, pi, second lap, 2 pi, 3 pi, third lap, 4 pi, 5 pi, going around the circle three times. So we have 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and 5 pi. Dividing all of them by 3, then, will give us our first set of answers. That theta is equal to 0, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3 reduces to just pi, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. Now, from the cosine equaling 0, cosine is the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate is 0 at the top, pi over 2, and the bottom, 3 pi over 2. So let's add those two solutions to our list, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And because it's just a regular theta, we don't have to do any dividing or extra laps around the circle. All of these angles then will give us a true statement for the sine of 2 theta plus the sine of 4 theta equaling 0. So as you can see, we've done a lot of trig properties, identities that we have to remember, know how to use, be able to recognize. Sometimes we're using multiple properties in one problem in order to solve. All of the problems, though, are going to require you to know your unit circle. So there are a bunch of problems like this in the textbook to practice with. Practice as many of them as you can to get comfortable with solving trig equations. And then let me know if you have any questions.